folks, Jordy here for Premiere Basics and welcome back. There has been an update to Premiere Pro called the 22 version and I'd like to show you guys the top 5 new features that this update brings. The first one is called Remix. Now it's not officially released yet, but it's coming soon. And if you install the beta, you can actually try it out already. Say that you have a song that does not fit the length of your edit. Well, there are some different ways to make it longer, but with Remix, it's just one simple click. With your music selected, head over to the Essential Sounds panel and click on the Edit tab. From here, select Music as the audio type and then Enable Duration. And you can see a whole bunch of new options in here. Now, of course, we're gonna select Remix and then just increase or decrease the duration of the song. That's it. Premiere will automatically remix the song to change the duration. And you can even choose how Premiere has to do that. Do you want more but shorter duplicated segments or less and longer segments? And if Premiere needs to focus more on harmonics or timbre parts to make its cuts. A really powerful and amazing new feature, something that I'm personally super excited about. Next up is speech to text and this one is already in the official release. Now from the menu on top, Windows select text. This opens up a new panel and we're going to start in Transcript. Click on Create Transcript. Choose where your speech is located in the timeline and what language it is. You can even make it detect different speakers. Then just hit Transcribe and let it do its thing. This new feature actually works super good. And if you do notice some mismatching words, you can easily retype them in here. And you can see here on the left that it detects the speakers, which you could also give proper naming if needed. Finally, click on Create Captions and choose the format of the caption that's gonna be the default subtitle usually. You have some more styling options or you can load in a pre-made style, that's up to you. Just hit create and that's it. A new subtitle track has been added to your timeline which holds all the captions and lays in sync with your video. Now, new features are nice to streamline your workflow and save time while editing. And our sponsor today, Storyblocks, helps you with that as well. Storyblocks is a demand-driven library filled with over a million royalty-free stock assets, helping you to create more and faster without limiting your creative vision. The ever-growing library is constantly being optimized and new stock assets are being added all the time, such as 4K and HD footage, After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and much more. Is technical know-how limiting your creativity? Then simply download one of your Premiere Pro or After Effects templates, helping you to bring your story to life while saving time and trouble. And their focus on more diverse and inclusive content helps creators find the right stock assets that reflect their communities and stories. Every creator should have a Storyblock subscription and you can choose a plan that works best for your budget. The unlimited all access plan gives you unlimited downloads so that you can try out multiple options and find the perfect fit, creating more, spending less, and without sacrificing quality. Now you can click the first link in the description down below to learn more about Storyblocks. Definitely do guys, I highly recommend it. And this brings us to the third feature which is a complete redesign on how you import, edit, and export your videos. This is also still in beta, but again, everyone can install the beta version so that you can try it out yourself. This is your new start screen when you launch Premiere. On top, you can see Import, Edit, and Export. We're currently in the Import window, which basically is just a big media browser. Nothing too fancy. You make your new project from the top here, where you can now type in a name and choose its location. But where Premiere wants to help you with is organizing your media. So after you select the shots you want to import into Premiere, you can choose on the right-hand side if you want to copy your media over to the project folder, which is useful for if you're browsing straight off your SD cards. You can create a bin if you want all your footage to be placed in there. And finally, you can also create a sequence based on your source clip settings. It will also import all of your clips into that sequence. I mean, it's not my preferred workflow as I don't really see advantages with bigger projects yet where you shoot with multiple different cameras. This is good if you're shooting with one camera and work on smaller projects, I guess. But hey, the option is here. If you don't like it, just disable all the options on the right. I'm sure that there are many people who do like this new workflow. So when you press create, you come into the familiar Premiere UI, and when you're done with your edit, you head over to the export tab, which works the exact same thing as the exporter we had before, it's just in a new different UI. They've removed a whole lot of presets from your list, which you can still access from the menu here, and you can actually choose which presets that you'd like to see. That's definitely a big improvement, although it's something very small. But yeah, that's in a nutshell the brand new workflow in Premiere Pro. Moving on to the next feature, which is something small, but again, a big game changer. We're going to go into the keyboard shortcuts and search for the Restore Trim. 
This is a new feature which you can set a custom shortcut for. When you're now making trim selections, you can select multiple by holding down shift. But then, oh no, you click next to the clip and all your trim selections are gone. Well, no worries, just hit that restore trim selection short key and bam, they're all back. I know it's something really stupid, but I'm really happy with this new feature. It doesn't always have to be some big new change. And that's just like the last feature when you open up the Lumetri scopes from the window menu. These are, by the way, color measurement tools, which I'm gonna do a tutorial about very soon. But if you right click in here and choose Vector Scope YUV, you get a representation of the colors and the saturation in your shots. Now, before this was entirely white, it now also displays the colors. That's the new feature. And now that I think about it, it's not that amazing actually. But hey, it's here. There are a couple of more tiny updates under the hood, guys, which you can read all about on the Adobe website. I leave a link to it in the description down below. And if you're interested to learn more about color grading since we're on a topic right now, then definitely check out the playlist here on my left. And definitely don't forget to subscribe for a new Premiere Pro tutorial every single Wednesday. There's a button down there for that as well. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Storyblocks, for the support. And as always, stay creative. Get out, guys.